I started brewing when I was just out of college, and so 1994. So uh, just as a hobbyist and uh, was involved in a homebrew club. Started here in Nashville. We used to meet at Bosco's that has since closed, but uh, started in a homebrew club. Got to meet John through the homebrew club. Uh, started entering competitions, brewing together, and sending beer all over the country, national level homebrew competitions, started winning a bunch of medals and at some point decided that, you know, maybe it was a possibility that we could turn homebrew into our career. You know, when you're making beer in your garage, you don't need to have an identity. You're just a guy making beer in his garage. Between Mike and John and myself, the founders of the brewery, we tried to make a very distinct effort to not just craft beer that we liked and that we thought would do well, but a a brand and an identity and a message that goes with that that we thought would not just resonate with people outside of the brewery but resonated with us. The Black Abbey over time has really evolved into being an authentic representation of the people who both started it and work here. Like we have created a family of staff people who are intimately and intricately involved in how the brand is portrayed and delivered into market, creating an authentic brand. Craft beer has been on a double-digit double growth incline for more than 10 years, and there doesn't seem to be any change to that in the future. Um, there are more breweries in the country now than there were before Prohibition. Uh, there are 3,400 active breweries right now, give or take, with another 2,200 in planning, so there doesn't seem to be any end in sight to the number of breweries, and, and that gives beer a real neighborhood feel. The Nashville craft beer movement for a long time was very insulated. Um, there was several brew pubs. It was Blackstone and Market Street and Bosco's uh, and uh, Big River, which is downtown. And so of those four brew pubs, they didn't really distribute outside of their physical location. Blackstone contract brewed and made some packaged bottles that were in the grocery, uh, but that didn't last very long. Um, then Yazoo came along and sort of changed the landscape as far as beer goes. They came into market as a independent player. They distributed their own beer. They didn't work through a corporate distributor and gave people in what has sort of traditionally been a whiskey town, right? We're in Jack Daniel's backyard and uh, just south of Kentucky, so you've got very much a bourbon or Tennessee whiskey environment without a strong beer history brought the idea that beer could taste different than what was available in the grocery store at, you know, stacked high and sold cheap, right? So Yazoo really laid the groundwork for the beginnings of the craft beer movement in Nashville and in a lot of ways Tennessee. Nashville, as it's changed, in both in terms of the food and the beer scene, the sort of cultural evolution of what's happening is that beer has gotten away from that picture of I'm just shotgunning beers at a tailgate party to beer drives neighborhoods. 